JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with family and friends today. Now on to the news. Jamaica celebrates history-making medals. Reigning national champion Reginja Campbell today created history as he became Jamaica's first Olympic medalist in the men's shot put at the Paris Olympic Games. Campbell won the bronze medal with a championship best effort of 22.15 meters, which he achieved on his second throw. America's Ryan Krauser took the gold medal with his massive throw of 22.90 meters, while teammate Joe Kovacs managed to grab the silver medal as he pulled off a 22.15 meter throw in his final attempt to overtake Jamaica's Campbell. Meanwhile, in a season's best performance, Meanwhile, in a season's best performance, Shanika Ricketts made history as the first Jamaican woman to medal in the triple jump at the Olympic Games. Ricketts, on her second attempt, achieved a mark of 14.87 meters to claim silver, while her teammate, Akila Smith, finished seventh as she achieved a championship best in a mark of 14.42 meters. Two men shot, one fatally in St. Andrew. Police have launched an investigation into the shooting death of a man and the injuring of another. Following a gun attack on Manning's Hill Road in St. Andrew on Friday, the deceased has been identified as 29-year-old Orlando McDermott of Glen Drive, Kingston 8. Reports are that at about 10.10 10 p.m., both men were walking on Manning's Hill Road when armed men opened gunfire at them. The police were summoned, and on their arrival, McDermott and the other man were seen with several gunshot wounds. They were assisted to the hospital, where McDermott was pronounced dead. The other man is undergoing treatment and is in stable condition. Illegal gun seized at party in Lawrence Tavern. The St. Andrew North Police seized an illegal gun last night at a party in Belmont District, Lawrence Tavern. A 9mm Browning pistol with several live rounds was found during a search. One person has been taken into custody. The matter is under investigation. The St. Andrew North Police have seized over 10 illegal guns since the start of the year. Spanish owned man fatally shot by police during alleged machete attack. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, has launched a probe into the fatal shooting of a 34-year-old St. Catherine man by the police who allegedly attacked cops with a machete last night. That is Owen Allen, unemployed, of Moho Close in Sydney Cottage, Spanish Town. According to reports, at about 7.35 p.m. on Friday, a police party allegedly received information that Allen had an illegal gun. A police team armed with a search warrant went to the location. They then entered the dwelling through an open door and Allen was reportedly seen with a machete, which the cops say was instructed to drop. He allegedly attacked the police with the machete, during which he was shot. The machete was retrieved by the police, and Allen was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Motorcyclist killed in Lawrence Tavern collision. A man died this morning. After his motorcycle collided with a car in Lawrence Tavern, St. Andrew, it is understood that the deceased is a resident of Glengough in St. Catherine. It is reported that the crash occurred about 1.30 a.m. in the vicinity of Oberlin High School. It was rushed to hospital where death was confirmed. The occupant of the motor car was also treated at hospital. The Lawrence Severn police are probing the fatal crash. This was the second accident involving a motorcyclist in less than 24 hours in the St. Andrew North Police Division. Late Friday, a motorcyclist lost control of his bike and reportedly ran into a wall along the Long Lane Main Road. He was taken to hospital where he was admitted. The Constant Spring Police are probing that crash. As at July 31, Jamaica recorded 222 road fatalities, resulting from 193 fatal collisions. Men posing as women charged with robbing taxi operator at Knife Point, three men reportedly dressed as women have been charged after they allegedly beat and robbed a taxi driver at Knife Point of approximately $100,000 worth of items and cash on Gerbira Drive in Mona, Kingston on Friday. The men have been charged with robbery with aggravation. They are 26-year-old Javonne Miller, otherwise called Jade, of Three Hill District, St. Mary. 23-year-old Dwight Davis, otherwise called Kayla, of Little London, Westmoreland. And 19-year-old Nikolai Hutchinson, otherwise called Talia, a cosmetologist of West Street, Kingston. Reports from the halfway tree police are that at about 7.30 p.m., Davis, Hutchinson and Miller boarded a taxi at the Crossroads bus park dressed as women and requested that they be dropped off at Gerbira Drive, Kingston 7. Upon reaching the address, Davis reportedly placed a knife against the taxi operator's throat and removed the keys from the ignition of the vehicle. The accused also took the taxi operator's cell phone before dragging him from the vehicle into a dwelling house at the location. The men were also accused 
are robbing the taxi operator of his black Samsung tablet, valued at $10,000, a Samsung Galaxy S20 smartphone, valued at $72,000, and $18,000 cash. The taximan was also severely beaten before he was thrown from the house with his car keys only, report said. A report was made to the police and an operation conducted at the premises where all the accused were found. They were arrested and subsequently charged. A court date has been arranged for them. Wife of cop killing businessman to make restitution refilled car deal, Sophia Singh. The wife of Singh's motors limited proprietor who killed a police officer last month before fatally turning the gun on himself at the halfway tree police station in St. Andrew has been ordered to refund a customer who made a complaint against her. The refund order was made on Friday by Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Judge Maxine Ellis, who further remanded Singh in custody until Monday. Singh, who ran the used car dealership with her husband Dion, is charged with fraudulent conversion. The court was told that she is to be slapped with multiple similar charges relating to allegations that she took money from persons and failed to provide the motor vehicles they were told would be imported. Her husband was facing similar charges. When he managed to get his hand on the police service weapon, he used to fatally shoot Detective Sergeant Kevin Main while being led into custody at the police station from the adjacent Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on July 22. On Friday, Sophia pleaded not guilty to a charge of fraudulent conversion and is expected to go to trial relative to that matter. Allegations are that she took $700,000 from a man in November 2023 as a deposit for a $1.4 million Toyota highest bus, which he promised would be imported and delivered within 21 days. The complainant told the court that when the vehicle was not delivered after the stipulated period, he made inquiries of the no deceased and was told that there were restrictions at Kingston Wharves relative to the Christmas season. He said further that he was forced to report the matter to the police in January 2024 after the vehicle was still not forthcoming and was subsequently reimbursed $350,000. The man also complained to the court that the accused issued him a bonds check that ended up costing him a bank penalty of $3,000. In making an order for restitution, Ellis said Singh should reimburse the complainant the $3,000 penalty amount and whatever interest he occurred on the credit union loan he took out to purchase the motor vehicle. Singh's legal team is expected to make a bail application on her behalf on Monday. Jamaicans who start receiving hurricane relief grants on Monday, says Holness. Jamaicans whose homes were destroyed by the recent passage of Hurricane Beryl are to begin receiving relief grants from the government on Monday, August 5. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement at the handover of units under the new social housing program in North Central Clarendon on Friday. Only said the first set of recipients will be those who have been assessed as having totally lost their homes. The government has outlined a comprehensive recovery plan for reconstruction to assist families who have been verified and assessed as having suffered damage. I had announced in Parliament just over a billion dollars for this element of the reconstruction and recovery, he stated. Under the initiative, individuals whose houses were destroyed will receive a grant of up to $400,000. Those whose homes were severely damaged will receive up to $150,000, and those who experienced minor damage will receive up to $50,000. Only noted that the aim is to complete the handing over process within the next three to four weeks, so that all Jamaicans who have been assessed as having suffered damage will be able to start their recovery and hopefully will be complete even before back to school. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister lamented that many Jamaicans have suffered loss and damage because of the Category 4 hurricane. They are without electricity, some are still without water, and many are without a roof over their heads, and possibly some have no means of recovery, he said. Hurricane Beryl affected Jamaica on July 3, bringing devastation to many of the island's south coast. Since then, the government has been fast-tracking recovery and rebuilding efforts. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.